please welcome Chief Sustainability Officer of Google, Kate Brandt, CEO of Rester and finalist of the Earthshot Prize, Clara Rowe, and our moderator, Chair of the Earthshot Prize, Cristiana Figueres. Well, so ladies, how exciting is it that we have now learned from Prime Minister Darden that we could be the first generation, and I'm including myself in that generation, just for your information, <laughs> that will witness a growing and thriving natural world. Is that possible, I think, is the question to be, uh, to be discussed here. Because I think we have two challenges to that. The first is speed and scale. We know that we are running out of time, and we know that we have to have both speed and scale in order to get to where we need to get over this critical decade. But the second and somewhat, I would say, newer challenge has to do with the accusations that are coming from many different quarters of greenwashing, putting out information, commitments, pledges that are then not backed up by action. So the combination, actually, of the potential that nature has, but also the technology to be able to get us to speed and scale and to transparency in the monitoring and the, uh, and the, uh, and the accounting is absolutely critical. So that's the conversation that I would invite you into. Kate, uh, can we start with you? Uh, because there are a few companies that I think can contribute to scale and speed as Google, and would love to just briefly hear from you on internal operations of Google and why you have really decided that you're going to go to speed and scale in your climate commitments. Absolutely, and such an honor to be here with you both and to have this conversation today. So you mentioned our operations. At Google, sustainability has been in our DNA from the start. We've been focused on this going back to our founding. And we think about this through a few dimensions. First is we need to lead by example in our own operations and our value chain. So we're committed to net zero operations and value chain by 2030. And a piece of that is 24 by 7 carbon free energy, which we believe has to be the future of the grid that's so crucial to reaching net zero for everyone. And we're on our way there, working in partnership, driving technology innovation from different new solutions around enhanced geothermal battery storage, that all that we need to get the grid to 24 by 7 carbon free energy. But also, we see some other big opportunities. Uh, we have products that billions of people use every day. You may have even used Google Maps to get here this morning. And we want to, by the end of this year, take, ena enable people to take action. And that's a billion new sustainable actions by the end of this year. And we're doing that through tools just like Google Maps, where you may have seen in the US or across 40 countries in Europe, now the default is the most fuel efficient route. And we're seeing this is huge for people right now. Fuel prices are at all-time highs. We can save them dollars at the pump. But also, just since October, we've been able to take the equivalent of 100,000 fuel-based cars off the road just through the simple and easy change that we've made in the product. And then the last area we're really passionate about, and this is where our partnership um, has come in with Restore, is providing planetary-scale data and solutions that can be a source of transparency and a source of action. So we'll talk about that more, but that's another area where we see tremendous opportunity. So Clara, what is the potential? What is the potential of nature to help us get to where we want to on both biodiversity and climate? Enormous. <laughs> it is the protection, the conservation, the restoration. It's key to pillars of climate, to biodiversity protection, to livelihoods. And to throw out a few numbers, Forest restoration alone has the potential to improve food security for over a billion people, if done right, to prevent up to 60% of expected species extinctions, and to draw down about 30% of carbon that has accumulated in the atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution. So if we can get it right, speed, scale, and I will add to that quality. <laughs> yes, but absolutely, of course. Transparency is a piece of that. But we need to, to scale and we need to scale well. And so that's what Restore is working on ultimately. But tell us a little bit about the project, which happens to be in my favorite home country, but tell us a little <laughs> bit about that. So Restore is a digital platform, 
and we are bringing together nature restoration and conservation projects from all over the world. So in the last year, we've brought together about 125,000 different projects. That's 125,000 different places where someone or many people are coming together to protect or restore nature. And that can be agroforestry. You know, we have cooperatives in Honduras who are bringing trees into the agricultural landscape. That can be large interventions that are planting trees or simply fencing off areas and letting them regrow. And so that community that we're building on Restore, it's about transparency because we're mapping each of these initiatives and we're able to show impact. But it's also about learning, and learning is a part of scale. And once we have each of these dots on the map, we know that the experiences of each of these projects can be shared among one another, and we can therefore get to impact faster, and we can make sure that things are happening well and invite more to join. So from the point of view of Google, because you're basically providing the services for this to happen, Kate, do you see this as a one-off? Do you see this as the beginning of a whole new chapter of technological innovation that allows us to restore nature, to keep track of how we're doing, and to go to speed and scale? I think this is a huge opportunity. And when we connected with Clara and Tom and the team a couple of years ago, we started talking about Google Earth Engine, which is our planetary map that we've developed that enables us to see the entire Earth's surface through satellite imagery, through cloud computing. And we want this to be a platform for action. So we were so excited when Clara and the team wanted to build their technology on top of our platform. And we're doing this in many other ways, too. When we also look at companies that are trying to set targets, Unilever has a zero deforestation target. And they came to us and they said, we're having a really hard time getting that visibility up into our supply chain to really understand what's happening with palm oil. And so they're using this platform to, get, to gain that transparency, to gain those insights so they can achieve their targets. So whether it's building platforms like Restore, whether it's companies achieving their targets, gaining greater transparency, that's what we want to be is that platform for action. So, quick question for both of you. Fast forward, it is now 2030. What has Restore done? What has Google done? Who gets to go first? <laughs> <laughs> In 2030, we imagine millions and millions of projects on Restore, and not just places on Earth where we see nature being brought back, but all of the other nodes that are key to ensuring success. So the technology providers, the, the nurseries, the seed banks, the funders, the government incentive programs, so that we have an ecosystem that really allows us to leverage the many, many connections within the nature-based solution space. And in 2030, we have been focused on another key area, which is cities. And cities require data and insights to take action on climate and to preserve nature, to create more nature and tree canopy. So we've set a goal that we create want to create more nature in cities. In cities, exactly. Exactly right. Uh, and we, so we've been partnering with cities like Los Angeles to give them insights utilizing AI and geomapping on where all the places that you can create more tree canopy, which reduces urban heat islands, improves air quality, sequesters carbon. So we want to bring data and solutions to bringing nature into cities, as well as, of course, preserving and restoring nature. Um, and so one of the goals that we've set is we want to enable over 500 cities around the world, I know we're going to hear from the mayor of, of Paris after this, to reduce a gigaton of carbon emissions by 2030. And so that's through data, tools, insights, whether that's evolving transportation systems or planting new tree canopy. So that's a big, bold target that we want to see achieved by 2030. So it's a very interesting vision but was, because what technology is allowing us is to cut that division to bring down the wall that used to exist, because I'm already living in 2030, by the way, that used to exist between where nature should be, according to our very limited imagination, and where actually nature is, which is everywhere that humans are. And to really see how, as, as you have said, what, what, how you flip the narrative of what uh, nature can do for the quality um, of life that we have. Ladies, thank you very much. Thank you for the work that you're doing right now. Thank you for the work that you will continue to do. I look forward to seeing you in 2030. <laughs> Hopefully before. Yes.